else out there or something or okay cool i guess we'll i guess we'll get started so i'm charlie that's my free bsd you know committer whatever you want to call it committer nick username i don't know i don't, I don't know pick whatever pick whatever terminology you want but uh yeah welcome to welcome to clash of the package managers on FreeBSD pep 517 edition so the 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 whole advertisement was yeah late for i would say for the past year or so um i've i and you know certain others who have who have been rather unlucky to be in my wrath have uh have dealt with um with getting pep 517 support which is basically the python's newer uh packaging you know packaging procedure uh compared to using setup tools and setup.py um there have been a lot of problems in at least the python community with using setup.py for pretty much everything and um and so a, a group of the a group of them well particularly the python packaging authority you know finally figured out that the situation was going to is is untenable it's unsustainable when it comes to just the the future of being able to keep python packaging you know keep it make keep it making sense so to speak mm. uh, you know so in in the python community just uh there have been a lot of projects that need a bit more elaborate build uh build procedures um numpy i can think of even though they're they're still kind of in the they're still they're still trying to figure figure things out um uh, but there have been a, quite a few python projects that need a bit more um flexibility in their build process in the packaging process than what um what dist utils and by extension setup tools on its own can provide so um and then and then of course you have you have newer python projects that introduce you know simpler ways of doing python packaging but at the same time everything still has to run through dist utils slash setup tools which is not exactly the most documented thing out there there's a lot of implementation details and they're very messy and and yeah it became became untenable so they came up with they and a whole bunch of other folks after a lot of discussion they came up with pep 517 which is uh, which amongst other things tries to make things a lot more declarative and and um make it make a make it make more sense but also better take advantage of the different uh different build backends that uh, that the python community has these days because you know different build backends serve different purposes and different uh, different build processes so 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 naturally speaking when you're when you have to interact with a newer type of language specific you know packaging you know packaging procedure the operating system side that the operating system package managers they're not going to be too happy in the beginning because like oh great now we have to now we have to account for a new pep 517 or a new procedure that our existing framework doesn't have and that's exactly what happened with us in freebsd ports uh, I, I know uh, i know open the open bsd ports they they already kind of took care of it before we ever got to it um i haven't looked at that implementation much if any because we're not at least in freebsd we're not open bsd they can do what, whatever they want we kind of have our own things especially when it comes to python flavors so for those who are less familiar flavors are the at whatever after the after the port name so like for example devil slash pi dash setup tools and then at pi 310 pi 311 you know to to designate different um python versions out there so so that that's that's the advertisement of this talk but i, I don't really want to necessarily make this too much about python specific stuff because that in and of itself is its own boff and a lot of people have opinions on it and uh we don't we don't necessarily need to go there in this one because because it's ultimately you know yeah sure pep 517 is python's you know language specific package manager but it, but it's really all about kind of seeing you know just as a general as a general take how do we how do we deal with how do we deal with the all the proliferation of language specific or platform specific or you know tool chain specific package management that operating systems like ours 
have to deal with these days. But PEP 517 just being just being the first case study of them all. So, so there we go. I'm gonna. This is basically just kind of top of the dome sort of a deal. You know, we don't we don't have slides. I mean, th there's not really much. There's not really much of a demo to show, even though. You know, if you go on, if you go in your, you know, ports repository, you can actually see, you know, how how we did things in Python.mk, but um, or or whatever else. But this is more this is more conceptual, I would say, um, in terms of uh, in terms of the content. So we're just kind of going off the top of the dome, just chalkboarding it, so to speak. So there you go. All right. So I've pulled up. You, you no one can see it because I have the screen pulled up, but. Uh, you could probably search up PEP 517, PEP 5 517, or PEP space 517. That'll kind of give you kind of the what um, what the Python folks, you know, th what they wrote as their uh, as their standard. Uh, they titled it a built system independent format for source trees. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be reading this whole thing, but pretty much, pretty much, uh, they're just they're just kind of defining you know, the new way, which is, so you have a TOML file. That, so this is the Python specific side of things. They define a TOML file and has a, a few sections, but the most important part, most important section is the build dash system. Um, there are other PEPs or PEPs that, uh, that define certain, certain other specific elements of it, but essentially you, you have to define a build system or build backend. And there are many, many such build backends in Python. You have setup tools, you have Flit, uh, PDM, you even have Mison. Mison is also a PEP 517 build backend. Um, but pretty much you, you, you write out, you, you, you do this whole declarative, this whole declarative TOML thing called pyproject.toml. And uh, you, you stick it in your Python, Python uh, source tree. And then, and then you run what's called a build front end on it. So kind of like, kind of like a make or Mison, or what, well, that, well, that's just the configure part. You know, you, you would configure it with like a like a configure script using Auto Tools or Mison or CMake or something like that. And um, and pretty much it does the as long as it imp, as long as the build backend implements implements a couple hooks that PEP five one seven specifies. Pretty much any compliant uh, any compliant build front end can spit out what's called the Python wheel, which is your binary. It, in this case, or most cases rather, it would be a binary binary because it's Python <laughs> binary uh, archive that um, that a package manager can then install. So what we do in what we do in FreeBSD, in fact, here we go. So we'll probably go with a little a little table here. See how good my chalkboard is. I haven't done it in a while. So let's see. So I guess we'll kind of we'll kind of structure it kind of like how the FreeBSD build process does it. You know, you have your you have your separate. We'll we'll, we'll leave out the the fetch and the patch those phases. We'll just kind of focus on the configure, uh, build and install. So we'll do we'll do or do configure, do build, do install. Kind of just focus on those because that's really the only parts that that. Um, that we have to deal with when it comes to a clash of package managers. So we'll, we'll start off with do configure. Let's see. Do build. And we got do install. Cool. So these are, I mean, for those who are familiar with FreeBSD porting, although it probably applies to the other ones as well, these are your, these are probably the three important, uh, important make file targets that you that you have to deal with. Um, most of the time, if you're if you're just building something that uses the standard, standard, you know, like Auto Tools configure or Mison configure or a or a CMake sort of a deal, you don't necessarily have to, you know, you don't necessarily have to do much of a deep dive into these targets per se. Um, maybe in certain cases, if you have to, if you have to do something extra, um, like like you know, remove a couple extra files or add a couple extra files or do something that the normal process doesn't do, you might do like a pre pre build, post build, pre install, post something like that. Um, but 
for for the purposes of just kind of illustrating the kind of illustrating the the, the clash of the package manager, we're we're just going to focus on these three. So so normally normally with the with the Duke, like I said, with the with Duke Duke configure, if you're using auto tools, you know you're probably going to do do configure would be a dot slash configure. And then whatever flags he got. Okay. And then once once that configure process can you know complete successfully, you'll probably run probably run make make whatever target it is. You know. All right make target and then your make install oops because sometimes sometimes the install targets a little different so cool so that's your that would be your typical typical you know auto tools or whatever homebrew configure make traditional configure make make install sort of a deal. And then you have a similar deal with you would have a similar deal with like Mison or CMake. In, in fact, let's let's do the Mison example. You Mison would be something like Mison configure even though we kind of we kind of don't explicitly specify that even though we should. Okay? And then your build um your build would be, you know, something like Ninja or could be make could be Ninja could be Samu, Samurai, um, depending on how you configured it. So Ninja, make, all right, one, one of these, one of these for Misan, and then your install, you just go back to Misan. Cool. So that's that's like two examples of of your kind of your traditional your traditional way. Now, how Python does it back back during the setup tools era or the dist utils era with setup.py, you had for configure you had something like and and this wasn't this wasn't always ran. It the target always existed, but you didn't necessarily you didn't necessarily use it all the time. But you would have you would have setup.py. Oops. So there, there's a there's a configure target or configure command rather in setup.py. You know, you pa pass your flags if there is a configure um, procedure in there. And then you've got setup.py build. And then your install, setup.py install. So they kind of the, the original design of distutils, they they try to they try to make it somewhat familiar with with the with your traditional configure and make sort of a procedure well on the outside you know that you know you, on the outside it kind of maps it, it maps okay to your to a ports framework or whatever whatever operating system uh build framework for their package for their packages right but when you actually dive deep into like i said earlier when you actually dive deep into the implementation of of dist utils and then and then one set of tools kind of imported dist utils into their tree um, because dist utils got abandoned. Um, it, it just become it, it became a bit more uh, daunting for a very skeleton team to kind of deal with, especially when you have undocumented or very poorly documented ways of doing things. Um, so so there you go. And then and then of course because because of the build process getting more. Um, more complicated in certain in certain packages, you know. Some some folks have actually even advised, you know, oh, why don't we just use pip for? Why don't we just use pip for just the in your operating system, you know, just wrap pip around that. Problem is pip is pip itself is heavy, like pip has its own dependency dependency list um, that uh, that might not be very desirable in. When you're trying to integrate something, when you're trying to integrate, let's say this into your into a ports framework, like Mison doesn't really have much of a doesn't have much of a dependency 
tree apart from maybe Python itself and and, and a couple other things like Auto Tools. You, you just need like M4 and M4 and whichever flavor of make you want. And we, we have make in our, obviously we got make in the base system and such. But uh, yeah, so with PET 517, instead of having to, so like in the early days of the PET 517 development, they didn't, they, they were kind of really focusing on making sure PIP was, would actually work properly with this thing. With, with the whole, you know, build back end, build front end sort of a deal. So PIP, they actually, they, they made sure that PIP could function properly as a build front end. Um, so when you, when you do like a PIP install, whatever, if the package was a PEP 517 package, they made sure that yes, like after, after you download, you know, your source distribution, um, PIP could actually, could actually, you know, run the, um, run the hooks that are specified in PEP 517 to actually build a binary distribution and then install it. Um, works well when you're in a virtual environment or when you only have to deal with other Python stuff, but when you gotta, when you gotta do deal with other operating system artifacts, not great. So later on, a few more of the Python packaging authority folks, they, they, uh, they came up with a package called installer, and then they also came up with build. Um, and so th those are a bit more scaled down, um, a bit more scaled down than your PIP in terms of, you know, your build front end and then your installer where once you have your source distribution, you would just do a, you would just do Python dash M in fact, I'll, in fact, I'll write it down. So in, so for the ports framework, you don't have a, if for PEP 517, there is no do configure. So do nada. So, so no, no do configure in PEP 517 because pretty much the whole thing is kind of contained in do build. So with PEP 517 in the, in ports framework, we're going, we're mostly using the Python pack or the PIPA build, although they're doing, so I believe the gen two folks, they came up with G PEP 517 separate separate package um kind of makes more sense for gen 2's sort of a deal um they they try to map it you know obviously more to you know like a ports framework sort of deal because they have portage um but uh, but really it doesn't doesn't matter as long as as long as the build back end like or front end like i said implements pep 517's hooks as long as it spits out a wheel a binary distribution wheel or source distribution wheel fuck all so so do build would be something like this. Space it out better. All right. So this would, so this right here during the do build, we just do a Python module. We just execute the module called build. And uh, obviously you gotta pass some flags to make sure that you don't compile if you want bytecode or you don't want bytecode in there, or actually no, that actually no, that's not that's not here. If it, it's you, you pass some flags if you want to if you want to do it in a virtual environment or not. For for the purposes of ports, we we leave out the virtual environment part of it. Even though if you're in an unclean environment, looking at you portmaster users, <laughs> uh, if you're in an unclean environment, yes, you might want to build in a virtual environment. But uh, but if you're in Pudrier, you already have one. So we leave that by default, we kind of leave the, the virtual environment flag out um, and just build it directly in there because we're throwing the jail away at the end. So Python dash M build, we we spit out a binary distribution wheel. So once we have that, do install, you just you run the installer. And you pass in the wheel that you just built into Python dash M installer. And then, and then of course you got it just like the other ones, you got to pass your destination directory to your staging, your, your staging directory. So that, so that uh, PKG or whichever package manager or package package, you know, creator can, uh, can archive up everything properly and put the metadata metadata in its correct places and whatnot. So so that's really the, that's really about, yeah, that's really about it. You know, just 
So then really the whole 517 bit, like I said, you know, whichever whichever build backend floats floats your Python packages boat, you know, as long as it implements your you know, implements the hooks that Pep 517 expects to spit out a wheel, everything else is just everything else is just sugar. <laughs> like there's there's not really not really much to it. Now during the during the whole you know ports framework you know year or so that um, that people that there was some yelling and screaming back and forth. Yeah, yeah, there was a little bit of a uh, little bit of conflict there in terms of how to properly implement it and byte code or no byte code. Like I said, that's another that's another BOF that we don't need to that we don't need to deal with. But that's that's really your that's really your comparison table. There, it's not really that much like if you're not that familiar with language specific, you know, language specific package management. You would think that is like, oh, great, we have to deal with we have to deal with a whole bunch of whole bunch of crap and and whatnot. But at least with this, it's just there's not if you break it down into do configure, do build, do install, it's really not that different from your configure, make, make install. Now, meanwhile, if you're dealing with Rust, if you're dealing with Rust and Cargo or Go's package manager, that, that might be a little bit. In fact, let's let's go ahead and do a little bit of um, let's do a little bit of Rust. So, if you if you're doing um, if you're doing Cargo, you have a Cargo. Sometimes there's a Cargo configure in there. Sometimes, um, do build Cargo build. Cargo install. The only caveat with the only caveat with with you know Rust or Go or any of the other any other the other ones that have a that have a um, integrated package manager that is that the language itself is compiled. Well, let's let's extend this a little bit. Let's extend the the do fetch. <laughs> We don't have to. We don't have to talk about the do fetch for the other ones because at least you're not you're not necessarily having to fetch a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of disk files in one port because um, they're taken care of in dependencies. So we don't have to deal with that. We don't, okay. So cargo. So with cargo or Rust, you got to fetch not only. You got to fetch not only the. The port that you actually want to build, or, or or whatever application that you actually want to build, but you also got to do it, do pretty much all of its dependencies, because because there's not really much of a concept of dynamic libraries like you would have in in C or C plus plus. Not 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 in the same, at least not in the same way that you would have it there. So your do fetch would have you would you would have original port right there. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, depending on how you implement it, or if, or if the dependency list is so long, uh, you, you can end up, you can end up with the whole uh, argument list too long error. Um, we haven't had to, we haven't had to run into that quite yet, but, uh, but in my own testing, um, in my own testing to actually make which is still on my kind of my private tree, if you will, to actually make Rust, make the Rust port itself, instead of using the vendor uh, vendor crates, just manage the crates ourselves, which we which we can do. Um, I had to, I had to make sure I had to make sure that uh, that we didn't exceed that uh, we didn't exceed that that argument limit. Um, but it, it turns out it turns out that the uh, that the whole do fetch bit of it, it was it was actually fetching the entire list like four times and that we no <laughs> no so so that that's that's really your little that's a little overview of um of your language specific stuff you know like i said if you just break it down you know so if you could probably apply this to if you if you, if you really have a care about it you know sit down and actually put your thinking cap on um Break it down into do configure, do build, do install. 
yeah, yeah, you can kind of get somewhere. You can kind of get somewhere. So this is just this is just one one clash of the package managers. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, just, just just one type. Now there's another type that I that I've been working on before, um, also last year. I think I kind of presented a little bit of it last year. The the results have still not been committed into the tree um, because um, because the the Arch Linux side. So last year context. <laughs> Last year, I presented a little bit about um, using so about the Linux, the FreeBSD Linux later, um, just using Arch Linux's repositories verbatim, uh, using Pacman verbatim, and using Arch Linux's repositories verbatim for Linux later environment. Um, that that was kind of buoyed by the success of um, of the folks working on Deb Bootstrap uh, using DPKG's tooling to to install um, an Ubuntu user land into a directory tree. So I was like, hey, let's probably do it with, probably do it with Arch Linux as well. In fact, it, 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 I didn't really take a look at what the ArchBSD folks did, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if I just ripped them off. Um, but pretty much, pretty much, you know, we already had a port of Pac-Man in FreeBSD that had kind of been sitting abandoned for a bit. I still haven't committed an update to it, but I have it running. I've had it running since last year, but it has now has two flavors. You have one flavor that deals with your native FreeBSD packages, and then but then the other flavor is an Arch Linux flavor that has pre-configured, pre-configured you know Arch Linux repositories. Um, you might have to put you might have to set which Arch Linux mirrors you want. It has your Arch Linux repositories. Um, I even created a port for the for the signing the repository signing keys, and that's actually the part that is preventing me from from uh, committing my results right now. Because in the intervening time between between when I presented it last year and to now, they switched their they switched their signing mechanism from GNU PG to a new program called Sequoia. That one's written in Rust. We have a port in it. That um, that the current maintainer um, has explicitly said that I can take maintainership from him or from them, uh, but it's a matter of like how do how do we want to structure it now because the, the the way that Sequoia does their does their repository is it they have a monolith monolith repository that they cut like you know they cut like different tags of like okay here's SQ here's Sequoia open P, open PGP but it's like a monolithic repository. And, and, and then there's, yeah, it was. Is the AV guy in the room? Why? I think the laptop that controls the camera is about to shut down. Oh. You got a kick there? It's. Keep okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So basically, the, the whole Sequoia situation of like, of how, how we want to structure it, that's the, that's the only reason why the, the Pac Man. The Pac-Man thing hasn't been uh, hasn't been committed yet, but this but that's that's really another another clash of the package managers apart from just apart from just you know trying to figure out the ports framework. Um, so one one way is to try to try to imp integrate whichever other package manager to play well with your port system or your package builder op your own host operating systems um, package building mechanism. But the other way is just to just to hell with to hell with ports, you know. In, install, you know, you can you can install Pac-Man, uh, Pac-Man configure it with some some repository, and as long as you put it in some other uh, some other directory tree called a day, could do that too. Um, you know, two different two different approaches. In fact, let's let's write that out. So that's the there you go. So over here, I don't want to write it. <laughs> <laughs> so over here you could you could do so external so you, you could do so I've got Pac-Man Pac-Man installing to let's say compat compat Linux compat Arch Linux whatever um you could have that eventually I, I also want to port over xbps that's that's the void linux one 
um, for, for a similar deal, there, there's a couple ideas that I want to explore, see if we can uh, see if we can integrate into ports. But um, so you really, yeah, you really just have you have two approaches. You've got the try to integrate it the best you can into the into your ports framework, or to hell with it. Which actually reminds me, so for our for FreeBSD's Linuxulator stuff, the the, the Linux stash C7 ports, you know. You have a very there's this there's this procedure. You you fetch your individual so you you, you fetch your whatever whatever uh, I think it I think it's sent to S seven. So Linux, let's see what whatever original package we can come up with. So you know what? Like let's keep going with the free BSD jokes here. You fetch something. You fetch a pre-built binary RPM for your Linux, uh, your, your Linux ports. All right. Not really much of a. You 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 kind of just extract it. So. No configure. You might have to do. You might have to do a little bit to make it. If you if you don't want to run it in like a C, C uh, a change route. Do a little something there. And then you just, and then you, you kind of just repackage it into the into the package format. So that's for for your Linux for your Linuxulator stuff. You you also have this approach that um, that the ports framework has done for quite some time. So so yeah, like I said, the you could have the live laugh love, live laugh love with the uh, with the ports framework or the hell with it. Um, yeah, that's really about it. Hopefully the you know hopefully all this kind of kind of sort of makes sense you know like i said it was kind of off the top of the dome um off the top of the dome because no notes you know just just a whole lot of whole lot of play break and learn sort of a deal so um obviously happy to entertain any any questions about uh any questions about anything or complaints or 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 whatever so that's really about it <laughs> what's up brad do you think there's um we should add like a to the users python like a pep 517 flag so that you know it kind of tree does some of that we we have that oh we do okay yeah, so that's the so in fact so, so this is your let's let's make another column so this is uh if there is a uses so as you do fetch da, 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 da. okay this is your this is pep 517 so you have we literally have, so for PEP 517, it is literally uses, uh, well, it's use Python rather. So let's let's make that proper here. Use Python, PEP 517. <laughs> All right. And then for set, for dist utils, it was, Use Python. All right, Mison is a, is just use uses Mison. Um, that that's kind of the default unless uh, unless you need to use GMake. Sometimes, right? So, so that that does it. So the, the the uses flags they do exist um, for for the ones that are not your default, uh, not your default configure make make install. Um, the the only the one big difference that uh, that I was told about um, com between FreeBSD and OpenBSD's implementation of five one seven support. Uh, apparently, OpenBSD also has like also has ways to like. You know, so so like they have like a pre-canned, you know, pre-canned build backend selections like for setup tools or flit or whatever. I actually made the conscious decision and, and I told everyone else that like we're not going to do that in FreeBSD just because you never you just don't know. You just one, it's like the part of the point of 517 is that you're not favoring one specific build backend over another, but you also don't know 
what other what other build backend projects that might exist um, that uh, that projects might use um, that that project that they might come up with, and then projects is like, oh wait, hey, this is better than what we were using before. Let's just switch over to it, you know, on a whim. So yeah, you, you just don't you just don't necessarily know like what what else might be out there, and you know, Quartz framework like we're we're not going to be we're not going to be exactly quick to quick to react to any any further proliferation of build backend. So at least on the FreeBSD side. You, not only do you have to put your use Python PEP 517, but you also have to make sure in your build dependencies, put in your specific build backend so that when you actually run, when you actually run this Python dash and run your do build, it doesn't error out because it couldn't find the build backend. So, so that's, I, I, hope that, I hope that part makes sense. Go ahead. Um, I don't do Table you have to write. Options end up installing in the same prefix because, uh, as, as opposed to in different, you know, in a different prefix with your external package exam. Yeah. So Some, many times, like what I found is that, you know, maybe something that uses Mason um, is also a dependency for a Rust package or yep. something like that. Um, but, but it actually wants a different version. Right. Uh, and so if you, it strikes me that, you know, if you extend the concept of different prefix to some of these other systems, some of those conflicts might become easier to manage. Yeah. Well, so at, at least, at least for the ports, at least for the ports management or, or, or the ports framework side of things. Um, yeah. Like that, that, that's why we have, that's why we pass in or explicitly pass in it, like at, passing for all of these you know on on the do install the the destination directory and the destination directory you know like it's got it's got your staging prefix and then and then of course your your package prefix which might not necessarily be the same when you install that's why you have you have pre, you have your prefix very your prefix make variable and then your local base prefix variable obviously those can be different um but but for the purposes of staging um you you always want to you always want to set your destination directory as your Desk steer and or, or your your staging prefix and then your packaging prefix variable, um, so that so that if you install it you from the ports framework that at least that part is always consistent. I mean, with the external packages, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, with the external packages, um, you know, so at least with Pacman, I believe I have I, I actually modified or patched the default configuration file to I, I yeah i believe i patched it to like instead of instead of installing into the into the root which which is obviously not desirable um yeah yeah i patched it so that it would install i think it i think i set it to compat sla or slash compat slash arch linux i know the i know the one that only that is the that's intended to be like the native the the, the native like FreeBSD Pac-Man stuff. Like I believe that one has also been patched to install into just like I think it's like user slash it's like prefix slash Arch Linux. I, I think that's the root, if I recall correctly. But you but yes, you, you do have to for like an external, you know, to hell to hell with the ports tree or or hell with the ports framework sort of a sort of a deal. Yes, you, you do need to make sure that um whatever whatever system you use that you can actually configure it where everything goes into a separate hierarchy of some sort, um, or 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 in the case if you're if you're just using like or in the Python's case, or whichever language that has its own like virtual integrated like virtual environment sort of a deal, you know, just you, you create your virtual environment and that's your hierarchy. So so you yeah you have a few options in that space. Um, we have any other. Any other questions or anything like that? I'm just checking Discord here. No one said anything on Discord either. <laughs> all right. Any other? I guess. All right. All right. I guess not. So thanks everyone for for coming. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you learned a little something about about you know just the the labyrinth or maze or mess of of um, of packaging and and um, 
you know, hopefully, hopefully after this, you might be able to, you know, think a little, think a little differently of like, it's like, Oh, Hey, it's just like, there's actually, there's actually a process and it's not that, uh, it's not that deep sometimes. So, so, uh, yeah, thanks everyone for, for, uh, for showing up and I think it's lunchtime. So. <laughs> All right. Especially in the go case, yeah. like, especially in the go case, code boundaries. That's why you have your, you have your, and like whatever numbers for AMD sixty four, whatever. Each language that has its own. Has its own idiosyncrasies that they kind of have to build into their into their uh, build slash package manager. In a sense, we haven't finished tackling Go yet. Kind of like brewing for us for a bit. Um, but yeah, we're dealing with the same thing. So, yeah, but that was cool. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah.